I'm talking about every day at work, uh, personalization, and I'm happy to be in a room with fellow advocates of personalization. Um, so today I hope to leave you with some tips on how we got to where we are with personalization for JustFab. Um, and really, we are all about the customer. Um, and we really feel that we bring style true to her personal preferences. Uh, we understand that style is personal. And that's what we set out to do and change the way she shops. Our, our member is the reason why we do anything. They inspire us. And in return, we do the favor by inspiring them with great fashion. I'm going to show a little video. So Mark, let's roll it. Look at these shoes. They're so cute. When a girl sees a pair of Just Fab shoes, she can't think about anything else. Somebody say Just Fab? Okay, it's time to go to Just Fab. There's this site that's called Just Fab. If you're not a member, you are crazy. It's a one-stop shop. You get everything you want all at once. I know that every month I'll have access to a personalized boutique, exclusive product, and unbeatable prices. You get onto the website, there's different tabs, clothing, shoes, accessories. We can just look, find exactly what we need very quickly, and even more, the things that you don't think you need, you see a picture, it's one click away. I definitely go for style inspiration. And what I really like is it helps me say, okay, this is what looks well together, go with that. Just Fab is helping me build my wardrobe. I came for the shoes and now I'm hooked on everything else. I shop at Just Fab because I know the brand, I know the quality. A lot of times I'll wear a handbag or shoes and people will ask me what designer it is and I'll say it's from Just Fab. I've loved everything else that Just Fab has done, so trying PS was the next natural step. I love the challenge of taking a client on a style journey. My focus is always to like put together boxes that feel curated for her and for her life. From wide width shoes to extended sizing in apparel and denim, Just Fab was made for all women, real women. The Chief Marketing Officer of Just Fab, Tracy Inglis. Just Fab's goal is to make women of every age, every height, every size look and feel fabulous. It's like shopping at 15 stores and looking at 20 different brands, but instead it's all there for you in one place at your convenience. Save yourself the time, save yourself the money, and sign up. You won't be disappointed with Just Fab. All right, that was a little bit about our brand. Um, next slide, please. OK, so I mentioned earlier the goal is to change the way women shop. And that actually holds true for all of our textile brands. Um, and we really stand on four pillars. Um, today we're going to focus on personalized styling, but we also stand for inspiring our members with our fashion, giving her value for price, and really building that community. Um, so personalization not too long ago was a really big buzzword I heard at every conference, and I really feel that it's, it's found its way to being a staple into uh, how personalization is a journey. It's, it's not an overnight achievement and you must walk before you run. If you come to Just Fab's website, you'll be greeted with a style quiz. And that style quiz, our, um, our visitors are providing their name, their shoe size, uh, their location, and style preferences. So out the gate, we have really rich data in order to best serve her through personalization. And we also capture what she's browsing, her page views, her purchases, her car activity, what she's searching, what she's adding to her wish list. Um, we then match her with a profile and give her a personalized monthly boutique each month. And she has access to pairing um, across all of our style personas. Um, so then we essentially show her what she wants to see. She obviously has access to our entire catalog on site, um, but it really helps to make the on-site and email um, experience personalized through product recommendations. Um, I know we're talking about email, but this allows us to cater the website experience to be personalized, and that's where a lot of our focus is currently. But if someone is a plus size member, she will see plus size models on the shopping grids. Um, so that's really, really neat for me, um, even though we're talking about email today. <laughs> okay, so how did we get there at ChessFab? We had to crawl and walk and run. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about crawling. 
Um, when I joined JustFab, our emails were being coded in the Philippines. There were maybe a couple of segments, absolutely no personalization. So I won't focus so much on all the work to get the data in place. Um, more, this crawl is more so what we were able to do once we had things like first name pass through, things like membership type. Um, so <clears throat> when we defined batch and blast and created basic email segmentation, we saw 9% lift and click through. Um, when we added first name and subject line, 35% lift and open rate. No surprise here, I think a lot of you guys are already working with first name. Um, then we tested personalized send time. Uh, and that gave us a 42% lift in first time conversion rate, which was really huge. So here's an example of uh, a test we did uh, during our transitional seasons, which in fashion is always a, those weird months where it's really hot in one side of the country and freezing in the other. Um, and what we did was use product recommendations uh, to then personalize it. It's more of a segmentation plate, to be honest, but we saw a 21% build in RPM by doing so. Uh, this is an example of a personalized send time test in which we saw 42% lift in first time purchase. Um, the test really only had a 5% lift in open rate, but by targeting users based on when they're likely to open their email, the intent to purchase was significantly greater. So I think it's really important to look at the, you know, all of the metrics. Of course, you would think that the open rate would have been a lot higher, um, but really surprising to see that it's a positive effects and impact on conversion rate. So a little bit about the walk. So this is when it really got exciting for me um, in our personalization journey when we were able to actually give her one-to-one -one product recommendations. Um, we have our monthly boutique uh, message that goes out and on site it's absolutely personalized. And up until th this test, um, we weren't able to personalize the email. So lo and behold, 44% increase in first time purchases. That was a massive win for us just by showing her the right product in, in the email and getting her to the site. Um, we know that once we implemented purchase funnel marketing, such as abandoned car, browse abandoned, um, you have a credit to spend, we increased our customer LTV by $2, which is massive. <laughs> Um, okay, here's some examples. Here's the test I was referencing around our personalized boutique. And um, granted, when you do personalized recommendations, the template's gonna look a little bit different. It's not the most ideal A-B test uh, because these recommendations have to follow a grid format when they're coded. Um, but we, feel pretty, we felt pretty confident rolling this out to our members. And it also eliminated a lot of work for our teams. Um, having to you know, not worry about coding or designing. So it's really um, had a great uh, impact to our work efficiency. Okay, a little bit more about our, our run. So we have been able to implement targeted offers based on her shopping behaviors. And I'll walk you through um, an example, but we have seen up to 136% incremental revenue per customer as a result of these targeted personalized offers. Um, customer journey focused experiences, we've been able to decrease our churn by 16%. Um, so an example of that would be once she's made her purchase, we have our welcome series flow, but what is that flow when she's made her first purchase? How do we onboard her? How do we educate her on the VIP membership program? Uh, what's the cadence we give her so that she doesn't come back and then decides to cancel our VIP, her VIP membership? Um, I mentioned showing her models closest to her body type and size, and that actually resulted in a 9% lift in conversion rate. Um, I know that we're not talking about UGC, but that's you know, another buzzword that's also become a staple into marketing strategy. Um, and UGC has absolutely worked in email as well for JustFab. Um, so right now, we're definitely not flying. I'd say we're speed walking. I, so, slash running, um, there's still so much more to do in personalization. Um, we recently implemented browser notifications, which are absolutely personalized. We have an abandoned cart campaign that's live. Um, we also feed in many of those data points into our uh, browser notifications to create relevant messages, which is not as frequent as email because 
that's oversaturation, um, but very effective. Um, we al also dabbled into personalized direct mail um, and testing into an abandoned cart campaign and direct mail through programmatic um, personalization. And then we are actively working on launching a mobile app, which will absolutely have a lot of those personalization tactics and hopefully more uh, to really get us to our North Star of um, personalization, which is having that one-to-one -one conversation with our members. Um, here's an example of a customer journey campaign that we call Lapse Factor. So at Hot Topic, I think we, and probably many of you in the room, we have a single definition of what lapse is. You know, if someone hasn't shopped with us in a year, put them in a lapse set segment, put them through that customer journey, and send them those, their offers. So what we did at JustFab was individualize the definition of, of lapsed user. So uh, first customer uh, comes to us every month and she shops. So no purchase at month five means she's 100% lapsed. Whereas customer two really shops with us every four months. It's, it's, not as, uh, it's not as frequent, but their lapse is more close to month eight. Um, so <clears throat> by sending them a lapse message based on their individual shopping uh, behavior. We're able to save on gross margin dollars by not giving away unnecessary discount dollars. And we're absolutely able to reach her at, you know, at the right time. So for this particular test, it was a massive win. We had a 226% higher segment of purchasing and 130% higher revenue per customer. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions on that one after this my favorite one. Um, so I know that we've gone through some really interesting templates and I am a firm believer that some of the best personalization is not always apparent to the customer. Um, I think that um, this, our new arrivals campaign is an example. So these emails are going out on a personalized send time. We know if she is a shoe purchaser versus a handbag purchaser or a clothing purchaser. Uh, and we're able to then rearrange the order of the modules in our new arrivals emails based on her interest score and then feed in one-to-one -one recommendations uh, um, based on her interests. Um, so in doing so, uh, we've proven a 13% higher click-through, so great engagement, and 22% um, higher um, segment purchasing. So uh, I know it doesn't really look personalized. It looks really outdated. This was a test from uh, last July, but it's a c continuing to be one of our best performing personalized campaigns that's not apparent to the customer. Okay, so I want to fly eventually, um, but it's going to take some time. I want <clears throat> my vision for personalization is extending it across all channels. If, if paid media had a way to really personalize upon Google search with first name and loyalty status and all of that, I'd, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Um, but I want real-time personalization on session behavior. I want to create a one-to-one -one dialogue with our members across all channels. Um, open to doing a little bit more with predictive analytics and layering it into our personalization strategy. Um, and learning more about voice. I, I hear more and more about um, voice and I'd love to figure out how personalization would tie into that. To be any vendors in the room, hit me up. Uh, okay, so the five tips as promised. Um, like I mentioned, the best personalization is not always apparent to the customer. Um, I think it's really important to build that foundation and um, you really have to collect the customer data in order to feed into um, your various algorithms or interest level scoring. And commit to testing so many iterations. Many of the tests that I shared today, I probably did four or five times over made sure to prove the concept. I got a variety of different results. Not all of them were wins. Some of them were losses and required a, a little tweak on waiting for the interest level scoring, adjustments to the templates. So definitely not a big win, move on to the next. Um, required many iterations. Um, we also partnered with our vendors for strategies. So you know, great ideas come from anywhere. Um, and our vendors, um, which is sale through for email, has, has really helped us get there. Um, and then, you know, I, I know Steve mentioned we are fortunate to have lots of brands under the textile umbrella. I think um, the biggest thing is sharing learnings across 
you know, different brands under the same company or even different channel managers. So we've been able to share a lot of our email learnings with our SEO managers, with our social, paid social team. Um, just really, and um, these concepts really translate and we were able to see big wins across the company. Um, so um, don't hard your, your wins, you guys. And I think that's it. Are there any questions? That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Um, so let's, let's drill in. Uh, we have about five minutes for questions. Let's drill in on, on how she did this and what she engaged. Where, anybody have any questions to start off? I have loads myself. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I'm Marissa Gobel with American Express. You mentioned improved conversion rates based on targeted offers that were based on individual shopping behavior. Could you elaborate on what those targeted offers were? Uh, they vary based on her average AOV. Um, so really, it requires looking at her average AOV. So we had maybe, I think we started with three offers um, to start. So it was a little bit segmented in buckets. And then our labs factor basically looks at um, how often she shops between number of days and how many days it's been since her last purchase to then calculate a lapse factor scoring. Um, and then we layer in the offer based on how much she spent with us. And if she hasn't spent with us, um, if she hasn't shopped more than twice, then we go based off the first activating order. Okay, are you gold on having this person expand into your just fab? So beyond shoes, they also bought, you want them to buy purses and clothing, or do you really just want that AOB to be higher? It doesn't really matter where it comes from. We've actually seen some pretty good success in upselling across categories. Um, truthfully, I think our, our member is a little bit more value driven. <laughs> and um, you know, we have members that love to be shown what to put together. So show her that handbag that goes well with that dress and the accessory that goes with it. Um, and then we have members that just want to see like all new arrivals. Don't, don't tell me <laughs> how to dress. I want to pick for myself. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm Heather Goff from Oracle Marketing Cloud Strategic Services. This is an awesome job. Oh, thank you. Um, a question for you about your crawl stage. You talked about defining your email batch and blast segmentation. Can you expand a little bit more on that and how you got that lift? Right. So again, when I joined, it was uh, there wasn't a CRM team, period. So it was all batch and blast, whether you are a new customer or a best customer, you got the same email. I think uh, when I joined, we had basically first time and repeat purchasers um, as, as our segment. So by creating a, you know, or, or starting our journey to like a hyper personalization model, that really helped us sort of prove that, you know, our work is, is, is imp important and creates meaningful lift for the business. Uh, Sujay Javeri, Flatiron Media. When you talked about personalized send time, was that